I created a YouTube style website using Python using the Django framework which is the main tool I know for building the backend. I had already made a simple version of this website before so it wasn't too hard to complete. I initially tried making it from scratch but I struggled so I decided to start with Django and then used almost the same approach to build it from scratch. I started by focusing on the entire backend. Once that was completed I moved on to the frontend even though I am not a big fan of frontend development. To kick off the project I set up a new Django project and borrowed the media files configuration from another website I had built with Django. Despite not using static files I configured them as I usually do in all my projects. Next I established URLs for the home page and the user registration page choosing to tackle user registration first. Django makes user registration straightforward with its built in form that can be easily called in the HTML file. Storing user information in the database is also simplified with the help of the pre built user model. Using these features I successfully implemented user registration on the site. Moving on to the next step I focused on creating channels. In YouTube users can create multiple channels with the same email address so I decided to replicate this functionality. I designed a channel model that includes a user foreign key field indicating that each channel is associated with a specific user. Additionally there's a subscribers field to keep track of channel subscribers. Before diving into the creation of channel forms I prioritized implementing login and logout functionalities. This was straightforward with Django's built-in login and logout functions. The logic was simple, users must be logged in to create a channel so securing this step was an essential precursor. And with that the authentication system is done. I have established a channel model but I hadn't yet created the form for channel creation. I address this by implementing the form in the next phase. Since there isn't a built-in form for the channel model, I duplicated the form from the login page and made necessary adjustments to only capture the channel name and profile picture. In the create channel view, I retrieve the values from this form and utilize them to create a channel object with the respective fields. This way, the process of creating a new channel is smoothly integrated into the overall functionality of the platform. Now moving on to the more exciting part, I began by creating a new model for the videos. The initial set of fields includes video file, thumbnail, title etc with the potential to add more fields later. I utilized a file field for the video allowing us to render it using either the file path or its URL. Subsequently I established a URL and view for video uploading considering the impossibility of multiple channels under the same user. I incorporated an input to select the channel for video upload. To achieve this I utilized a radio input in HTML. After obtaining the HTML form, I assigned specific names to the input tags and successfully implemented the video uploading functionality. This ensures that users can seamlessly choose the channel to which they want to upload their videos. Initially, I employed a bit of JavaScript to open the video directly on the home page when users clicked on the thumbnail. While this offered a quick solution, it became apparent that for a more robust user experience, additional features such as comments, likes, dislikes, etc. would be necessary. Implementing these features directly on the home page without a dedicated video page could complicate the design. However, for the current stage, the video is successfully rendered providing users with a basic yet functional viewing experience. Continuing the development, I introduced dynamic URLs for each channel providing a dedicated space to showcase essential information such as the subscriber count and all associated videos. Given that we had previously incorporated a subscribers field in the channel model, there was no need for additional updates. This marks another successful step forward in the project. Now I created a new page for each video. I just rendered the video for now but later on I will be adding more. I realized the importance of a search bar on the navigation so I went ahead and implemented the search functionality. For simplicity I employed a basic search algorithm that checks whether the character pattern entered is present in either the video title or the channel name. With this implementation users can now effectively search for videos and channels based on their titles or names. Recognizing the need for a more engaging user experience beyond just having videos I decided to implement a feedback mechanism for the content. To achieve this I created new views for video views, likes and dislikes introducing three additional fields views, likes and dislikes into the video model. To make this matrix accessible I incorporated function that retrieved the number of views, likes and dislikes. With these elements in place I successfully integrated the matrix into the HTML page providing users with a more interactive and informative platform. And with this we have the number of views, likes and dislikes shown and also working button to like or the dislike video. Moving forward, I address the need for a comment section on videos. Recognizing that multiple comments on the same video made it impractical to include as a field in the video model, I created a new model named comment. 
This new model includes field for user text and created it, providing a dedicated structure for handling comments. To facilitate the addition of comments to the database, I developed a corresponding view and incorporated a form which is then rendered on the video HTML page. While the current version doesn't yet feature capabilities such as liking comments or replying to them, I plan to incorporate these powerful functionalities in subsequent versions. Additionally, future updates may include features like YouTube Shorts and Community Posts, aiming to enhance the overall richness of the platform. Transitioning to the front end, I integrated Bootstrap CSS into the base.html by adding the necessary script and link elements. This laid the foundation for a well-designed user interface. I further expanded the user experience by creating a navigation bar, providing essential functionality and navigation options. Additionally, recognizing the potential for multiple channels under a single user, I introduced a new profile page. This page showcases the channels associated with the user, offering a convenient way to navigate to a specific channel by clicking on it. This frontend enhances contributes significantly to the overall usability and appeal of the platform. We are now delving exclusively into frontend development. Following my typical approach of utilizing cards for various elements, I applied the same strategy here. On the home page, everything other than the videos have been removed. This card displays key information such as thumbnail, title, number of views and upload time. When working on the channel and profile pages, I maintained consistency by employing the same card design as used on the home page. For the channel representation card, I followed a similar pattern omitting the title, upload date etc. and instead incorporated a button for subscribing or unsubscribing. This unified design approach ensures a cohesive and familiar visual experience across different sections of the platform. Moving on to form styling, I standardized the design for most forms using Bootstrap CSS. However, the registration form for users presented a unique challenge as it employs a Django built-in form. To maintain a consistent aesthetic, I applied some custom CSS for the user registration form. Concluding the development phase, I fo focused on styling the video page, incorporating icons for the like and dislike buttons from fontawesome.com and which added a visually appealing touch. Bootstrap's text area was utilized for the comment section, ensuring a clean and user-friendly interface. By centering all elements, I, I achieved a balanced layout. With this enhancement, the current version of the YouTube clone is complete. Moving forward, I plan to introduce additional features including YouTube Shorts and Community Posts to further enrich the user experience. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching.